and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we are going to start talking about circles. Now, this is just a an introduction to circles. We're going to uh, talk about circles in an entire chapter in a couple weeks, but uh, I wanted to get you going on just the basics of circles. Some of this you already know, so let's get started. Okay, so when we talk about the area of a circle, we're going to define that area as pi times the radius squared. So if I were to draw a circle and then mark the center of the circle, then the radius is going to be that distance from the center of the circle to a point on the circle. And in fact, the radius is going to define that circle because <coughs> all points of the circle are going to be equidistant from the center of the circle, and that distance is going to be defined as the radius. Uh, so the radius squared times pi which is approximately 3.14, is going to give you the area of the circle. So I could shade in the area of the circle if I were to find out what the radius was, multiply it by itself, and then multiply it by pi. That would give me an answer in units squared. Now I can also find the circumference of the circle. And the circumference is the distance around the circle, or we could just say the perimeter of the circle. And there are two ways you can find it. One is to multiply 2 pi times the radius. But we also know that the radius uh, is going to be half the diameter, right? So if I were to draw a line from one side of a circle through the center to the other side, then I would create my diameter. That's essentially 2, uh, two radii. <coughs> so we can see either pi times the diameter, or we can say 2 pi times the radius. And that's going to give us the circumference, the distance that we travel all the way around the circle. OK, moving on. So when we talk about an equation of a circle, typically what you've seen is an equation that says x squared plus y squared is equal to some value. Let's just say it's c squared. And um, in those cases, what you're being given is you're being given a circle uh, that has the center uh, and the origin. The origin is the intersection of the x and y axes. So in that case, we just say that uh, the center is at the origin, and we provide an equation x squared plus y squared is equal to, we'll say, r squared or c squared. But now we're going to talk about uh, translated uh, circles. And when, what I mean by translated circles are circles where the uh, center of the circle is going to move off of the origin. Okay, so let's just say, um, in this case, we're going to move it to 3, 3, and I'm going to mark off the diagram 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 2, 3, and I make my center of the circle here. <coughs> and in this case, I've translated the center of the circle. Now, it's pretty easy to define what the uh, circle equation is based on what the center is. So we've defined translated circle as having a center of 3, 3. And now we're just going to use this equation or formula for a circle, and we're going to create the equation of a circle with a center of 3, 3. And then we also give that the radius is going to be 4, or 4 units here. So I can create my equation from a circle, a translated circle off the origin, with a center at 3, 3, by just substituting in the value of uh, the two coordinates for x and y. OK, so 3, 3 is the center. So now the confusing part is that I'm going to write, even though it's a positive 3 for the x value for the coordinate, uh, you write x minus 3 squared plus, and then I have a positive value for y. It's going to be y minus 3 squared is equal to r squared. r squared, we said, was going to be 16. r is 4. So here is my equation for the circle with a center of 3, 3. So remember, in this case, my center is going to be h, k. My formula is going to be x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. Now, if we think about what the circle represents, all we're doing really is we are creating a bunch of right triangles, OK? And uh, in those right triangles, we're saying that this value here, let's just say a, 
a squared plus b squared is going to be equal to c squared. Now, I'm not going to go into too much depth. I'm just going to leave this as it is for now and briefly explain this. But when we get into circles, we'll talk about this in a little bit more depth. So I'm just creating a value of a in this portion of the equation to give me this length along the x-axis in blue. And then in the y-axis, I'm just creating a length, y minus k squared, to give me this length. And that's going to equal r squared of my hypotenuse. So I end up just restating the Pythagorean theorem as a circle. It's pretty neat once you understand what's going on. And as the point moves here, I am just re establishing my circle and what my hypotenuse is. My hypotenuse stays the same. It's always the same value. But the a and b values will change based on uh, the coordinates of the point on the circle. OK, moving on. Just a little food for thought. So finding the uh, area of a sector of a circle. A sector of a circle is just a, it's a piece of a pie, really. And it's the area uh, bound by two radii and the arc of a circle. So the radius has to be uh, a line from the uh, center of the circle that touches the circle itself. So the sector is the area in between two radii uh, and the arc that bounds the circle. Um, the central angle, a central angle is the angle formed by the two radii. So the way you figure out the sector of a circle is you just figure out the relative portion of the central angle relative to the entire circle. Uh, and then you multiply it by the entire area of the circle. So in this case, we'll work out a problem. Um, I have 80, my central angle is 80, and my radius is 5. So I know that the portion uh, or the fraction of the area is going to be 80 over 360 because we know that uh, the number of degrees in a circle is 360. So if I were to take an entire sector that encompassed 360 degrees, it would be the entire circle. But in this case, I only have 80 over 360ths of the circle represented by this pi. And then I'm going to multiply it by the entire area of the circle. And I can find that out. I have 5 as my radius, so it's going to be pi r squared. So it would be pi times 5 squared. And I can figure out that <coughs> now I have 25 pi times 80 divided by 360. And that's going to leave me with an answer. Let me check my calculator, which is roughly about 5.56 <coughs> pi. Now, in these cases, I just tell my students, you can leave the answer in terms of pi. Um, you don't have to express it through. But in some cases, I'll have you multiply the value by pi. OK, last uh, slide in, in this introduction lesson. So we want to find the measure of the intercepted arc. So first, we found the sector area. And remember, the sector corresponds to the area of the circle is just a portion of the uh, circle, or fraction of it. Now we want to find the length, or portion of the circumference of the circle. And there are a couple things that I need to talk about. One is an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on the circle. So here we have an inscribed angle because the vertex is on the circle. And, <coughs> and the sides are going to be chords. And a chord is a segment. Excuse the uh, miswriting here. A segment without this E uh, joining two points in a circle. So I have one chord here and another chord. Let's say this is chord. A, B, and then I have another chord, A, C. So a chord is a segment joining two points in a circle. Uh, and uh, I have an angle whose vertex is on the circle. So I have two chords from A to B and A to C. They form a vertex uh, that creates an inscribed angle. Now, the intercepted arc uh, is going to be this length here, B, C, is going to be the, uh, the degrees of the central angle. Uh, but it's also going to be 2 times the inscribed angle. So we can figure out if the intercepted arc, BC, is going to be 2 times the inscribed angle, then I know that it's going to be 120 degrees. Uh, and in this case, I know that uh, the, uh, the inscribed angle, I'm sorry, the uh, central angle is also going to be 120 degrees. All right, now things can kind of get confusing here because we're talking about <coughs> the measure of an intercepted arc. And then we can also talk about the arc length. So let's just uh, clarify between the two. And 
So I've been talking about the measure of the intercepted arc, and that is in relation to a degree, it's in relation to the central angle and the inscribed angle. But I can also figure out the uh, arc length, so the length from B to C. And I can do that in the same fashion that I measured or figured out the area of the uh, sector of a circle. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a fraction of uh, the entire circumference and multiply it by the entire circumference. So I figured out in this case, let's just say that uh, my radius is going to be 3, and we need to know that, or at least we need to be able to derive what the radius is. Uh, and I have the measure of the central angle or the measure of the intercepted arc is going to be 120 degrees. So I would say 120 over 360, which is the fraction of the intercepted arc relative to the entire um, measure of the distance of 360 degrees of that particular possible arc length or a measure of a circle, uh, a measure of a central angle in a circle. So I have that fraction 120 degrees over 360 degrees. And then I multiply it by the total circumference, which is going to be pi times the diameter, or 2 pi r, which in this case is going to be 2 times pi times a radius of 3. So I get 6 pi times 120 over 360, which is 1 third. And I end up with 2 pi, in this case, as my arc length. So I have 120 degrees, which is a measure of uh, BC, the intercepted arc. And then I have the length of the arc, which is going to be 2 pi. All right, so let's just walk through what we've talked about <coughs> as some of the basics of a circle. Right, area of a circle, pi r squared. Most of you have already seen that. Circumference of a circle, and that gives you the entire interior region in units squared. Circumference of a circle, pi times the diameter, or 2 pi times the radius. That's going to be a length around the circle. We can figure out the measure, or I'm sorry, the equation of a circle that's translated off the origin by finding out the vertex uh, of the circle, the coordinates of the vertex, and also what the radius is. And by substituting those values into this equation or formula here, we know that the sector of a circle is the area that's bound, it's a portion of the circle, area that's bound by two radii and then uh, the, um, the arc of the circle. And then we know that central angle is going to be, I'm sorry, the central angle is the angle formed by the two radii <coughs> and the arc length. You know, the sector is going to be that portion of the entire circle. We know that when we're trying to find the measure of an intercepted arc, it's different than the length of the arc. The measure of the arc is going to be in relation to the degrees of the central angle. It's going to be the equivalent number of degrees. Or it's going to be two times the measure of the uh, inscribed angle, which is an angle whose vertex is on the circle. And then we can also figure out the measure or length, excuse me, the length of that arc by figuring out the relative fraction or portion of the uh, measure of the intercepted arc times or over the 360 degrees, which is the measure of the entire arc length in degrees, <coughs> times the circumference of the circle. So we're getting a fraction of the circumference of the circle. All right, no problems for this particular chapter that are too difficult, so I'm going to let you go on your own. But again, remember, in another couple chapters, we will start talking about circles in more depth. I believe it's chapter 10, so come back and join us if you have more questions.